flower man When are you gonna go? All right, we are out in the garden this morning, finding a little sun to stand in front of. Dave, how are we doing this morning? We're doing good. We're it getting, is gorgeous out it here. It is gorgeous. It was a little bit warm this morning, but that means one thing. We're going to release a lot of beneficial insects. Now, okay. for folks that don't know what that is, when you've got damage in your garden, there's a lot of insects. About 95% of them are basically friendly insects. Okay. So what we do is we help them out by releasing. This is trichogrammer, moth egg parasites. We use these in the fall. There are eggs on this piece There's of paper. There's small microscopic eggs. Okay. I don't know if Bobby can go ahead and just get real close you to need there. my reading glasses. You almost do, do you? There's probably about a thousand of them on there. And what happens, these guys hatch into small parasitic wasps. They are almost microscopic, so they can't hurt you. So what you want to do is you just go ahead and hang these throughout the garden. Really? In the plant material. When you've got caterpillar problems, we've got a lot okay. of looper problems right now. And what happens is these guys go ahead and take care of it through a natural process without having to use any dangerous kind of chemicals. Okay. And it's real important that you think along these lines because when you have these insects in your garden, you want to grow a lot of different types of flowers, like your marigolds, your wildflower seeds, uh -huh. and your lissom. All of them need to be going in right now because of the fact that we want to really boost the amount of nectar in our garden, especially for something like. Praying mantis. You've seen praying mantis. Of course. Here's one that's the egg or the asp of the praying mantis. And there's Ooh. about 200 small praying mantis You're inside kidding. this. No, I'm not. And what happens is these guys go and hatch. Now they will eat. What do you do? Just drop that down on the dirt? Well, you can put it in your pocket. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> or you can go ahead and put it up in a tree. Or... One's going to be crawling out of there. Here, later. That's okay. You know, he wants to be on air. But what you want to do is you want to put these guys out around your garden. And what it does, they hatch. They will eat virtually everything. So you got to be careful when you're utilizing something like this, but it works out just fantastic. We only got a minute, but there's a lot of other ones like your lace wings and your beneficial. Where do you get toes. those things? And you can get them at arbico-organics.com. Okay. Here's one of the most important ones. For those folks up in Prescott and maybe in the upper elevations, I get a lot of emails. How do I get rid of grasshoppers? What you want to do is you want to release, and this is called Nosema bait or Nosema lacusta. Just spread this around. Looks like grass. Sawdust. It does. There's a lot of pathogens in there that attack those different types of grasshoppers out there. Spread this around about right now through late winter, and it helps get rid of those grasshoppers or grasshopper infestations wow. we see so That's often. Pretty cool. During the spring. You time. know what I have a lot of right what now? Do you have Hummingbirds. Oh man, They're I everywhere. love them. And I that's know another it. reason not to spray pesticides. Oh, there you go. that's a good point. You I love those guys. Dave, uh, we're getting rid of pests. We are. In fact, there's a lot of ways to get rid of pests. One way, and I'll just show you one way, we planted a lot of onions and garlic and shallots they don't and everything like the else. smell of that? You or? know what? It confuses the sensory organisms of the pests themselves. And so what happens is we plant a lot of that and we interplant that throughout the garden. What that does, what you just do? I was hitting this bee out here. You got to be careful over there. That bee's a friendly guy. That's one guy we want around the garden. Scott. Keep it, keep it to yourself there. But that's a great way to actually do it. We do a lot of other different types of plant material out here, too. So that's one way. There he is again. Here's another way, Scotty. What you want to do is you want to go out there and grab some of that food grade diatomaceous earth right there. And that stuff is fantastic. And what you want to do. Is this you okay just kinda, for my hand? Yeah, that's okay for your hands. You can actually, uh, yeah, it won't hurt you. And it's perfectly safe for the environment. Helps the soil when it actually goes on the soil. But here's how to apply it. Unlike the way Scotty's applying it there, you can see that. What you want to do is you just take a little puffer and barely apply it to the plant material. Now, oh, as nice. it's on the plant material, it will actually scarify that waxy, ex waxy exoskeleton of the insect itself, causing the insect to dehydrate. One of the best and most effective ways to get rid of any type of crawling insect. Scorpions in don't like those either, do they? This gets rid of the scorpion's food supply. So anything okay. a scorpion eats, this will help okay. kill. So, since we're talking about scorpions, yes, this let's is a move great idea here. that you came up with. Well, this is something that we found out. We were capturing a lot of scorpions in our office and trying to figure out what hurts them and what helps them and everything else. One thing we found is we always had water in the aquarium we kept the scorpions in. Mm -hmm. So what we did was these scorpions would vector over to the water immediately. And this is a little cup of water. And there's a little bit of water right in the top of that, and that's just a little capful. And, and right in the middle of that trap. is is a glue trap, right. And so what we've done is we've gone in and done this and we've done it quite extensively and uh, found out that these scorpions are very susceptible to moisture. Now why is that? Probably one of the reasons they're in your home is because of the fact that it's a little bit warmer or cooler 
and whenever the whatever the temperature is and the fact they're after moisture because they can smell that moisture so why doing that you're going they're going to immediately come over to no, it and get into no, it no they're in your house to bite you no they're not in your house and to bite you. you they're in the house to feed on all those okay. nasty insects that we talk about here's another way and i'm sure everybody's heard of it just a little bit uh, ultraviolet light and black light like this go around the house they will fluoresce and you you've done this before Scott. I have, they yeah. look like a beacon when they're yeah. hit with a black light so you can find them real easy that way and then an old indian trick a little bit of cinnamon goes a long ways to basically warding them off. I've known a lot of people that actually sprinkle this around their doorways and really? it does a great job on getting rid of them. And so, you know, there's a lot of ways to actually get rid of them, but those are three ways that are real effective. Last but not least, time to start thinking about putting down those beneficial nematodes. Now, if you've got ants, crickets, anything that's really soluble, in, including termites, this is something we put in. We put in some type of water and then we sprinkle or spread it around the house since it's fairly damp and it's cool this time of year. It's a great way to get rid of those, like I say, those grubs and termites or ants are basically down in your soil. They're a small, microscopic, non-segmented worm that exists naturally down there and they crawl in the different orifices that we won't talk about and extinguishes any type of insect in the, in the soil. In the meantime, this is anti-scorpion around is here. Anti we don't like them. All right, Dave, thanks. Thank uh, you, Scott. Uh, as usual, you're excellent out here. We'll take a quick break and a few more minutes. Good morning, Arizona. Coming up.